Morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. So uh, I've not made a video since probably last Thursday and I've had a lot on. As usual, I don't need to tell you this. Um, so I've not really had a chance to pull the camera out. You'll notice behind me, the tanks are stripped where the heating elements are. Yes, we've run into a little issue. And uh, I've also, I did promise I was gonna do this on camera but I haven't, I've also made a stillage for the whiskey barrels. So I apologize to everyone out there who's looking for a, a welding video, but it was just one of those things I had to get done and yesterday I had the time to do it. So should have pulled the camera out, I know. I apologize, I've got lots to do today in fact, but I've made the effort and uh, taken the camera out of my pocket. So. Let's just flip the, uh, flip the image around and we'll have a walk around and I'll talk to you about the things that have gone wrong over the past few days and have gone right. So, seeing as I'm stood directly in front of it, I guess I'd better talk about this stillage. Or this, I don't know what you call it, a stacker of some type. So, it's to sit on top of these two barrels in the horizontal position and we can put two more on top of it. Then we can fill the barrels, put an airlock in the top bung, and we should be away with uh, filling them up with beer then. Basically all I've done is got two by two box section, cut it into a frame, and then I ran out of two by two box section, so I managed to get some one inch box, which seems sufficient to me actually to make these braces. Obviously these are vertical supports when it's in position. And then I was gonna fashion some fancy kind of cask supports but in the end just a little bit of angle iron chopped and laid down on the side at the correct orientation to kind of sit along the barrel itself so we don't have a point sticking into the wood seems to have worked got a little bit of paint to put on there today but this should be ready to go into service by the end of the day and uh, that means we can get these casks out of the way they haven't been there all the time, by the way. I just took them down yesterday for measuring up. So what's gone wrong with the heaters on the fermenting tanks? Came in after the weekend and the electricity was off. Not sure when it went off, but I've got some ice pops in the freezer and they were all melted, so I'm guessing sometime. Now, it was FV3 that was causing the trip and after some in-depth exploration with the multifunction tester, I managed to find an insulation resistance failure between the heat mat and the fermenting tank. Fortunately, I had the foresight to provide a fairly substantial earth strap to every single tank. Um, I think that's important whenever you've got electricity buzzing around something metal like this. So we found the fault to earth and it turns out that it's down to the fact that these silicon heaters, although they're named as silicon heaters, they're not waterproof. Let's go and have a look at one in the workshop and we'll be able to see why. So here is the offending item removed from the tank and stripped of its adhesive backing. I've taken all the glue off, which took me a long time yesterday to actually, I had to just slowly rub it off with my finger. So you'll see that there are patches of silicon rubber missing. Now what's happened is along the edge, these mats are not impervious to water. So water's got in along the edge here, condensation mainly. And then it's obviously got into the... Uh, laminations between the rubber, the etched foil and whatever else and uh, separated them so there are areas where where this rubber just just wants to kind of come off and then once that rubber's come off we've got the moisture the moist area obviously can then make an electrical connection between the etched foil and the tank itself or at least it can arc across so I connected this up to the multimeter and I probed onto this little, there was a little black spot here and indeed I got continuity. I got continuity 
at four volts. So it didn't take much arcing across there at all. So obviously it com completely fails a uh, insulation resistance test at 240, 300 volts, 250 should I say. Um, so what is the solution? Well, I've referred back to the instructions provided by the manufacturer and they do recommend that you seal the edges of these tank, uh, these um, mats to the tank. It said while they're not waterproof, they would, they would survive the occasional splash here or there. I think they mean face on, that seems fine. Anything on the side is going to ingress in, certainly around this area as well where the connections are and the thermal cutout. So my plan is probably to scrap this one because its electrical insulation has failed. Unfortunately they don't have any more of these in stock so I'm going to have to find another solution. Either a bigger mat, which they do have in stock, or wait for them to come back in stock. Or maybe even find a way of repairing this and re-insulating these little areas that have failed. Who knows? And then what I'm going to do is reach for my favourite uh, RTV silicon sealant. And that is Plumber's Gold. Now this stuff seals when wet and it is bulletproof. Nearly £7 a tube but worth every penny in my opinion. It will seal even underwater. So what I'm going to do is take the sealant gun and I'm going to seal around the edge of all of the, connect, uh, the, the heat mat and I'm also going to do the same around the connectors to double insulate them if you like and then we'll take a view as to how that's going to work and then I'll have to just put all of the insulation back up and tape them all on again I mean it was a bit of a job putting the mats on and then taping everything up in situ now I'm going to have to go in there in an even tighter spot in order to get a seal round I'm going to have to cut a bit more of this foam insulation back, which means I'm going to struggle a little bit. Some places not so bad, like around here, but most places it's going to be quite difficult. And of course that means I'm going to be on my knees, which for me is a little bit of a danger because I've got a chronic knee condition. So that's where we are today. I guess we better move all these casks out of the way, get them on a pallet. Get everything in the cold room. These have all come out of the tanks in the past few days. So apart from tank number one, everything's empty. So we are not going to have any condensation issues on the tank while I go forwards with sealing them up. It's such a shame because this is a really kind of easy solution for heating the tanks. I just wish they were made a little bit more durable, a bit thicker. Silicon rubber perhaps. So it's time to convert as well this cold room. Well it was a warm room this side, cold room this side for the can stock. We're going to turn it into a triple cold room. So it's just a case of removing a bit of the insulation. Pop that around the corner. Same with this. Should just kick out. Beautiful work. And then if I just take these pieces out, that will be enough. There'll be enough air circulation. I can leave these in position and we'll get a cold room both sides. Shouldn't be a problem or... So yeah, these cold rooms have really done me quite well actually. The fact that it's holding all this mezzanine up here gives me a lot of spare space to put things which I'd be screwed without quite frankly so let's get this cold room back in action another bit of uh, machinery worth sharing with you guys I think um, thanks to our good old chum Froggy uh, he managed to save this from going in a skip recently it's a three phase pillar drill and funnily enough I was looking at buying a new one and he's donated this to the course for a price of some of a case of beer. What a fucking guy. Absolutely brilliant. So we'll just have to find somewhere 
for that to live, probably maybe next to its little brother there. But what a piece of kit. I also actually need to fit a fly lead for it because it's three phase. We could just probably run it off them extension cables to be fair. Let's quickly go back into the brewery. We've spent most of the day today because um, I know that was a bit of a jump cut there and it looks like I was just following on from this morning but now it's gone three o'clock and I've been underneath the tanks kind of sealing, sealing the edges. You can't really tell can you? You can, you can. So I've been sealing the edges to the tank so we don't get any moisture ingress and I had to lay on my back to do these ones. This wasn't as easy as it first appeared to be. But I've sealed pretty much anywhere where I think water's going to get in and that should then make these relatively safe piece of kit. So I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's just going to trip the electrics and I have to disconnect it. But I don't want to do that. I want it to actually be functional and um, heat the tanks when I want the tanks heating.